All right, is it recording? It's recording, it's recording. Okay, in case you didn't know, I'm pretty much done with, um, whoops, page seven. And I'm gonna start page eight, which I've also done. I need to move my camera a little bit better. There we go. There's a couple of things that I wanted to do. I just noticed Um, this particular crystal didn't have enough dimension to it, or seemingly less dimension than the others. But that's the whole thing, man. All done. Completed. So here's page eight. Technically, at least if my initial concept is correct, the halfway point of the story. Um, and the way I like to start these pages is by committing to the panels first. The thing about comic pages is, to me, they're always kind of in a fluid state until you start to lock down the panels. And even then, you know, the great thing about digital is you can, you know, change your mind if you need to. This is a five-panel page. It used to be my average. I've been doing shorter pages lately, smaller pages. I had... um the live stream this weekend and um, Sideburns kind of mentioned that it slows it down if you have more panels. He's really good at doing like 13 panel pages and stuff. But I tend to think it's the opposite sometimes. Maybe it, maybe not with him. Well, maybe it is with him, but I, I think when you have a lot of small panels, it goes fast. I tend to have a lot of I have dialogue that goes on. I don't feel like it's a lot of dialogue. It's no more than four lines at a time. That one's got five, but it's a short panel. So I had to compress it. But, um, you know, Dems my standards. And if you don't like those standards, I have others. As they say. All right, same deal here. Okay. And then I just got to cut off the excess. Oh, and I've, I didn't end up doing a video yesterday, but I was doing a lot of drawing. I've, I'm in a, I've got a commission for some Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And I had the idea of doing like kind of a Viking Celtic nutwork theme for a character sheet. So this is what I came up with. I've been doing these, um, I did this this bird looking thing here. And then um Well this is the first one I did was right here. So the Viking style it has your thick parts are the creature and then the thin parts are where the knot work goes. And then um you can also take it and, you know, do a mirror thing and you get this great Alphonse Mucha looking, you know, beautiful pattern. So I did that similar right here with this dragon. I don't know if you can see it. And it's mirrored, but then after I, um, so I made the one side, then I flipped it, doubled it, you know, copy paste. And then I started to make it so it's not exactly, it's asymmetrical. There's a tail here, the head here. 
So then I tried to come up with a way to incorporate this into um, the character sheet idea that I had. So there it is. And if you can see it, it's got this kind of elven lady on the side and her hair becomes this kind of Baroque, not work. There's this one creature on the corner. And uh, this is, of course, just the draft layer. We'll go over it again and re-ink it um, to make it beautiful. The project is associated with this thing, the Runes Fantasy RPG Zine. I didn't do this cover, but I'm going to be submitting something for the next cover. I did do these character sheets, um, which went out as part of the Kickstarter. And apparently, a big success. So cool. Glad to hear it. Um, I also did spot illustrations inside the magazine. So for example, the spider and this dragon right here are from me. I did a whole page of them, this demon and this candle. Um, this rat. <laughs> I did a whole page of them and I'm going to be doing more. Um, so that's coming out, but that's what slowed me down just a bit. Uh, having too much art to do is a nice problem to have, I guess. Especially since it's paid for. Okay. Let's start with the ink. So what's going on here is... Uh, I'm not sure if, if I'm correct for doing this or not. If you look at page six, if we go back two pages, you know, here they are in uh, Vuku's throne room area in Vuku's realm. And they're there for like two pages. In page seven, they're traveling through space here and they're talking. And then page eight, they descend to Arcadia. So I've got to set up an establishing shot for Arcadia. First shot, shot number one. Um, but I don't want to do... You know, at this point, I'm like, I don't want to do another half page. I don't want to do a full page splash. I just want to um, get some kind of establishing shot. So I've got like, it's supposed to be like an ancient Greek idyllic, um, you know, abandoned and yet perfect natural area. That's the wrong one. I better be on the ink layer I am. So I'm going to have this root coming out of the ground. And then there's in the background, there's going to be like a, a rumbling aqueduct or temple wall or something like that. And some forest. You know, we're very much going to be out in the wilderness over here. This is a rock. All right. So this is a uh, Prometheus Powers and Abrax, and then this is Honda right here. And what's the purpose of this page? Every page must have, must serve a purpose, must impart something new to the reader. Every single page, hopefully every single panel. Uh, and in this one, well, panel one, we're doing our establishing shot. Panel two, we're establishing that Abrax has never been there. Panel three, Prometheus reiterates that he's missing memories and why he came. So this is a very important panel. Uh, and then panels four and five are super important because we're going to show how Abrax changes Hondo back to a monkey from this goose, goose form. And that, in a nutshell, is how you do comics. You got to 
you know, figure out what are the new pieces of information that I've got to share. And which is and keeping in mind that you know that every comic is someone's first. Sometimes you'll have to repeat some information. At like one time per comic. You don't have to repeat it on every page. But you might have to um reestablish who the characters are, what their motivations are, um, you know, what their names are, is basic information. You know, that might have to come up every single comic. So I just ordered a, um, I want to get back into colored pencils as well. And I ordered a uh, a silverware organizer. You know, like one of those trays you organize your silverware in? Because, like, my colored pencils, they all live in their tins. And it's very frustrating for me to do colored pencil because you have to get out each tin. I mean, each little tray out of the tin. <laughs> and if you want to get to, like, a certain color, like sometimes the black... Um, Colored pencil and the neutrals are all in the bottom tin for some reason. So this tray I'm hoping will change up some of that. Plus it was it was very cheap. You can get an old tin for I'm an old silver organizer for not very much. Dollar store. All right, this ruined bridge or wall or aqueduct or whatever it is, this is a useful thing to have because it's got an underside to it. You can see underneath the bridge, so that helps to establish your perspective. We're here and we can see not only the thing in the distance, but we can see up into it. So we understand, aha, we're lower, we're much lower. Um, very first appearance of Arcadia in my comics is actually in Isult. In fact, it's in Isult number one. This is where um, Silverclaw drops off Isult after she's uh, rescued from the moon madness. Oh, I should mention there's no moon here. That's one of the <laughs> one of the um the the details of, of Arcadia is there's no moon. That's how um Isolt, who's a, she's a werewolf, right? She um she was not subject to the moon madness in a place with no moon. So there's let's put some Vines kind of hanging off, maybe. I was liking this when it let's break it off, make it kind of a little rough. Okay. Let's see what it looks like so far. Aha! Uh -huh. It's starting to look like a wilderness scene almost. All right, so what we got to do now is we got to make sure that we put our, our horizon floor, our, our uh, real thin across wherever, and our line weight has to be real nice and light.
I might have to get some photo reference so I can like look at something and it may end up with me revising some of this. So where the goose is coming in for a landing, I think what I want to do is kick up a big cloud of dust. So we might obscure a lot of stuff over here around here. Because if you've ever seen like a goose coming to land, they kind of do this thing where their their wings are down, their feet are down, and they just sort of descend. And then Hondo wears a crown many of his in many of his incarnations. So it's a goose with a crown. How the crown doesn't fall off, I don't know, it's magic. Okay. Something like that, maybe. So we got the beginnings of Hondo flying in for a landing. But I was excited yesterday to, to be doing um, some of that not work stuff. That was a lot of fun. It's a cool skill to know. So I might do a couple of tutorials on how to do it, because it's actually not that hard if you have digital. Like I've I've drawn, in fact, I drew, um, I used to draw a lot of like Celtic knot work. But what would inevitably happen is you do a lot of erasing in Celtic knot work. Like you're, you want to make your, your um, curves and lines balance. Balance is like this critical skill. It's the same reason I draw the acanthus leaves, is you're trying to get the curves and the balance right. And there's no, you know, template or French curve that you can follow that'll make you get them exactly what you want. You kind of just have to eyeball them and develop a sense of patience about it. But um, what would happen is you would end up wearing out a piece of paper with the eraser. All right, let's see how the goose looks now. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. And then um, if you follow tutorials, the tutorials are all, I'm sure they work for some people. They don't work for me. So the typical Celtic knotwork tutorial will say, well, you start with drawing four dots, you know, and then you're going to, you're going to draw a loop around each dot. And then, you know, you're going to do whatever. And it doesn't quite work like that for me. 
Like there, there's like a whole method for it. But it's also there's many different types of not work, and the kind I've just kind of fallen into discovering is urns. It's named after a church that it was found on. This sort of Viking looking stuff. Well, lots of movement here. I might have gotten a little too busy over here because I'm going to have to have Prometheus Powers landing as well. I want to be able to see, you know, enough details and silhouette that we know that it's him. You know? Let's go ahead and make this and some feather. There we go. Oops. There's tons of texture we could be doing here. The secret is to just be patient and just don't go overboard with it, but all right. So this is meant to be like a blade of grass or something coming up in the foreground. I have a feeling it will be confusing, so we're going to take it back out. Maybe some small ones. The real, our, our lightest line weights in the background. We could even show like a mountain off in the distance. Even a range of mountains. Even some clouds if you want to. Oh, and I haven't even drawn our main character. Oh, plus the this this will not work. <laughs> Plus, I've got to do the uh, narration box up here. Okay, but it's going to happen. Rather, I've been using a silhouette for this guy so far, but let's actually have him like poking his head out, and he's like he's looking outside as the thing kind of comes into a landing. And we're underneath, so we can look up into the, the roof, like the underside of the roof of the little carrier that he's got. All right, let's take a look. 
looking pretty good. How about Prometheus Powers? All right. Whoa. Somehow switched over to the pastel pencil. Okay, let's take a look. I think that's a good setup for a, for a panel. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and, um, I don't know, I might have to call it a video at this point, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to do a bubbles layer. This is the bubbles layer, rename bubbles. Code name, government name bubbles. Using the technical pen. And then once again, we're going to do a breakout panel as we're switching scenes. I like to do a breakout panel voiceover. Not good. All right, what happened there? This is not good. And it says the crystal. So first of all, let's fix that real quick. Right, nice breakout panel right there. But remember, we're gonna fix No, oh, cancel, cancel. This one. Initial caps. I like to do a big circle. And then letter T.
There we go. Looking good. Actually, it's not looking that great. It's looking a little weird. You know what I think I might need is um, make it just a bit bigger. Let's let's move that T down a little bit. You can see this in the like the Floyd Gottfredson Disney, and you can see it in Wiz Comics number one, you know, with a Shazam. Such a cool trick. All right. Set us down, Hondo, slightly in the wrong place now. How about right there? Okay. Nice. And then this looks like the perfect place. So this looks like a perfect place. How about this looks like a perfect spot? To avoid the alliteration. Oh, they might might. Stacks are looking that tight. This is right here. It's probably about as tight as I'm going to get the stack. Okay. All right, and there we have a panel, a panel in our comic. Got four more to go, <laughs> so page eight begins. All right, please like, follow, and subscribe. There'll be more comics every day, and you might even see some of the other stuff, like some of the Celtic Network. We'll see. All right, talk to you later. Bye.